Well, here we are. God moving the harbor from a house to a pizza parlor to a church, out of that church to another church's fellowship hall to a sanctuary with stained glass windows. I wonder how God works. So I couldn't have planned it if I tried. So I hope you like it. I know I'm really enjoying it, and you all sound phenomenal in this room. Not that you didn't before. But, um, did you have a good Thanksgiving? Did you eat too much by chance? Oh, yeah. Yes, that's part of the plan. Um, I definitely did. I had two Thanksgivings. I had one on Thursday with my mom, but last week I was with my sister, and she had her 17 favorite people over, and we had a massive feast, um, which inspired me to the next day when I got to go to my sister's house try out her new piece of workout equipment. I knew that I would need that workout. And she had been raving to me about this uh, exercise bike she had gotten. And I hopped on it and I set up a little workout and I did it and I pushed through and, I, and it brought me to my last strain of strength. And I thought, man, I just did a really good job on that. And then it like spit out your score where it was like your calories burned and then it put it on the list of like where my sister had worked out every day for months and months and I realized she works out three times as hard as I possibly could every day. Um, I thought I might get that piece of equipment because they can kind of compete with each other and she could see my scores and I could see, but that's never going to happen now because there's no way I'm going to see that. Um, but the reality is that she, over time, had developed muscles to do this work. Um, she had cranked away on her bike and put um, muscles into action so that she could be strong and capable. And this month we have been focused on Thanksgiving and what it means to be thankful. And I believe that similarly God gave us muscles to exercise so that we could be thankful people. And so that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at three um, muscles that God gives us so that we can appreciate what he's done for us. Um, and the first muscle is um, the muscle of pausing and recognizing what we've been given. It's one that I feel like is atrophying in our culture. Things move so fast and we're so busy that slowing down is incredibly hard. And I was reminded um, this week of a passage in Genesis 14. Um, and, in, and it's, a, it's a somewhat stressful situation. Abraham has settled in the land and his, and his nephew's lot has gone with him. And um, then some kings invaded the area and um, kind of took over where Lot was settled. And so let me read this passage. It's Genesis 14, 12 through 20. It says, um, The four kings seized all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their food, and they went away. They also carried off Abraham's nephew Lot and his possessions since he was living in Sodom. And a man who had escaped came and reported this to Abram the Hebrew. Now Abram was living near the great trees of Mamre the Amorite, a brother of Eshcol, and Aner, all of whom were allied with Abram. And when Abram heard that his relative had been taken captive, he called out the 318 trained men born in his household and went in pursuit of them as far as Dan. And during the night, Abram divided his men to attack them, and he routed them, pursuing them as far as Hobah, north of Damascus. He recovered all the goods and brought back his relative Lot and his possessions, together with the women and the other people. And after Abram returned from defeating Keterlomer and the kings allied with him, the king of Sodom came out to meet him at the valley of Shabbat, that is, the king's valley. And then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was a priest of God Most High. And he blessed Abram and saying, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth. And praise be to God Most High, who delivered your enemies into your hand. And then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. Um, stressful situation. Getting a relative out of a bind. A lot of adrenaline had been flowing. He puts his life on the line to go attack and to try to save his nephew. And it comes to pass, along with a whole pile of stuff. Um, and in the middle of that, this random guy pops up out of nowhere, Melchizedek, a priest, and says, You've been blessed by God Most High. Praise be to God for this. Um, it's a powerful thing in our life to just stop and consider. We've been blessed 
by God most high, and he's given us this, whatever it is. You know? It's something that we don't know how to do naturally, and I'm so thankful that Abraham had somebody to help him do that, and I think we can help each other do that, and I think we can train ourselves to do that. Um, but this, this, this stopping and pausing and taking it in um, is something that we can choose to do. Now, I'm not really great at this. Um, it's not something that I'm super routinized on. My wife is the queen of, of, of routines. She's very, very good at them. Um, I think teachers have a natural knack for this. Um, ADD people have a natural unknack for this. Um, but I know that, that uh, doing this on a regular basis begins to shape our, our hearts and our attitudes. And when we start to do this, we start to look around and go, man, I've been given a lot by God. He's taking really good care of me, so why wouldn't I be generous with somebody else? Um, it wasn't the big thing, I think, for Abram to give up a tenth of what he got uh, after that victory when he realized that God had given him the whole thing. It's a very, very different perspective. On Wednesday night, we got together and we had our Thanksgiving service in and it was just a really sweet time um, of us uh, speaking forth the things that God has done for us. And we did this exercise where we kind of held our hands out in front of us. And I listed off some categories and people kind of put out a finger every time they thought of something in that category they were thankful for. And, and very quickly we ran out of, of fingers. Our, um, our hands were open and filled to overflowing. Um, but that's not how we often think about life is that we're overflowing. And so. Um, how do we do this? How do we actually pause? I want to encourage you to do something that um, they do in the recovery community as well as something that um, has been a part of the Christian faith practice for a long time. And that's towards the end of your day, find a moment, some little spot, maybe it's when you brush your teeth at night or whatnot, where you can stop and go, what am I thankful for today? What did God do today that I could thank him? And it becomes a routine. It, it teaches us this attitude. Um, another one that I tried to do this week of Thanksgiving was to write thank you notes for random things that you wouldn't normally thank people for. Uh, so I went to go get a haircut and I wrote a thank you note to my hairstylist explaining that I do a job where people look at me and I really don't care that much about how I look. And so without her help, I'm in deep trouble. But the coolest thing about it was um, I really appreciated what she did more because I took the time to say thank you. And it definitely made her day. And so that's, that's two ways that we can just pause. Um, that's the easy stuff though. That's the ones that are like right in front of us. Um, from there, I think Thanksgiving gets a little bit harder. And that brings us to the second muscle, which is how do we find the blessing in mixed blessings? Um, when things don't live up to the hype, I know that um, I had a perfect picture of how moving into this building would be, and that it was going to be amazing. This is our sanctuary upgrade, and uh, this morning there was um, confusion about whether or not the snacks are theirs or ours, or where we're going to have snacks, and um, I just want you all to know you're free to eat anything out there. As a matter of fact, Gordon and Harbor have provided those things for both groups, so um, there's that. But uh, in the middle of that, I'm like, oh no, is this thing falling apart? This hasn't worked. Uh, we had trouble with the sound system, all kinds of stuff. And it, it's in those moments that I usually find myself gravitating towards the things that are not good. You ever do that? Like 80% of your life is actually going pretty darn good, but the 20% that's not going so good is the stuff that you, you gravitate towards. Um, Got to tell you about one little story. Have to. Um, Christina and I went on our, one of our bucket list trips, and it was to go to Italy, which I'm Italian, it was to go see the motherland of Italy. And um, our last day in Rome, we decided we have to go to the Pope's church. We gotta go to St. Peter's Cathedral and see this gorgeous sculpture by Michelangelo. Actually, if you put it up on the screen, it'll be good viewing for if you're bored of looking at me. The Pieta, it's, 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 it's incredible. Um, but I was telling Christina, I'm like, ah, I don't know, this is, we barely have enough time to do this. And so we got to, the, to the, the cathedral and there was a line, very long line, like Disneyland long line, like an hour long line. 
and it started pouring down rain and that line is not covered in any way shape or form and I'm standing there now we're getting soaked and I'm going we're never gonna make the train out of here and so we went through the whole line um, we got in there we were able to look at that for about 30 seconds, I think, before we had to run to the train station and get out of there. And I'm pretty sure that entire time of running to the train station, I was telling Christina, see, I told you, we should have never waited in that line. Now we're going to miss the train. That was so not worth it. Um, and Christina, in the midst of this, was sitting there going, how cool, we got to look at that. It's amazing. Um, James chapter 1. It's a passage that I want to laugh at every time I read it because it just seems ridiculous. But here's what he says. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And when perseverance finishes its work so that you can be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. James had a way of looking at trials and tribulations saying, look at what God is doing here. There's good in the midst of this. Um, sometimes I feel like we look at the mixed blessings, the things that we can only describe as mixed blessings generously because it looks like things have gone awry um, with the wrong eyes. That we need to shift our focus a little bit. We need to see the bigger picture and we need to find the things to thank God for in the midst of it. Complaining about our work, bigger picture. We have a job. We have a life. God is taking care of us. Um, lately, I've been struggling with friendships. I feel like I do this every holiday season. The holiday season is supposed to be like happy and together this time, but it isn't for all of us. And there's struggles in the midst of it. And and this is the time when I like do inventory on friendships, and I go, man, I've been putting out a lot of energy into this friendship, but I'm not getting anything back, and I get really disappointed. And then I get focused on it, and in the midst of all that, I start to resent. And so this person who has been important in my life no longer um, is a positive because I can only look at the negative. And even more than that, I miss out on all of the incredible people that I have around me. Are we able to look around with big, wide eyes, bigger picture, and see what it is that we have to be thankful for in the midst of the things that are not quite right? So that's kind of the mixed stuff. Now it gets even more challenging. And I gotta read this passage. It, it was one that I was like, hey, we're doing small group. I think I'll do a passage on Thanksgiving. Um, and I never considered how hard it is. And this has become the great challenge of my life. It's 1 Thessalonians um, 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray continually, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Easy, right? Just pray continually, rejoice always, and give thanks in every circumstance. Oh man, how do we be thankful when there's really nothing to be thankful for? When all we look around and we don't see a reason to be thankful. Um, <clears throat> It's in that moment that I think this passage is written out of a spot where Paul realized that God is much bigger than our circumstances. Um, God knows how to outdance our circumstances is how I think of it. And that comes out of when I was at camp. Um, every Saturday night, we would get all dressed up and we would go to ballroom dancing at Seattle Center. Uh, and we did this because it was free. Um, so it's fantastic. We all got dressed up. We all went to this place. And there were a bunch of old guys there who would um, see like these these like 18 year old girls and come over and very formally ask if they could have a dance. And the girls had no clue what they were doing in ballroom dancing whatsoever. Um, and they would misstep and it looked like they were about to step on the, the guy's toes and, and they were stumbling all over themselves. But in the arms of a really good dancer, it was beautiful. Those guys knew exactly how to move in order to keep the dance going and to keep it flowing right. Um, God is like that. He has a way of taking our situation because of who he is, no matter how much of a mess it is, 
and bringing good out of it. And that's why Romans 8.28 says God works all things together for the good of those who love him. Um, we sang about that exactly happening in the song right before we uh, got into the sermon, Nothing But the Blood. We sang about humanity at its worst. God comes, becomes a person among us, lives a perfect life, loves us, cares for us, opens up a door to us, invites us to be with him, and the human response was to kill him. Um, if you think of uh, goodness in terms of justice, what could be more unjust than taking an innocent man who had actually done no evil in his entire life, and then with no actual crime, committing him to a public, uh, painful, disgraceful death. And yet, what does God do with that event? He saves us. It was the, it was the epitome of God's goodness, is to take a death on the cross and evil and turn it into the most good possible. It's the place where you can look to find what love really looks like. Someone laying down their life for us. Um, God, if he can take that event and make it the most good, I'm pretty sure he can handle what's going on in our lives. So whatever circumstance is going on, we have a way to say thank you because God is there. God is still God. And God has continued again and again to bring forth goodness. Hebrews 11 uh, talks about faith, but I want you to think of faith as also trust. It says this, Faith is confidence in what we hope for and being assured of what we do not see. That means um, we have confidence that what we hope for is actually happening. God is in the midst of saving and bringing the world back to what it's supposed to be. And we have assurance about it, even though we don't see it happening. We can't see God's goodness anywhere in the midst of this, and yet God is still there. And in that moment, can we say, thank you? And we can because, well, 4,000 plus years of God being good and bringing good out of difficult situations. You can read about that here. And then the longer we walk with the Lord, our lives begin to get marked by it. And if God did that all those other times, and he's still the same, what is he today? And if we know where we're headed, that God will set all things right. That every injustice and every disappointment and every tear will be wiped away. Then God must be at work. It's the great comfort third muscle is actually faith. Can we trust God to be God even now? Now the beauty of all this is that um, whether or not we do the muscles or not, uh, God's going to do what he's going to do. But uh, we get to see more of it when we do it. So can we pause? Can we be thankful? Can we thank others for what they're doing so that we can appreciate our life as well as they can see it? Um, can we find things to thank God for in the midst of messy, mixed up situations? And can we trust God even when things look dark? Because um, it's in that moment that God can be doing the most good. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you are a God who blesses us abundantly. Thank you for this hour that we could come together, that we could pause, that we could share what's going on in our lives, and that we could say thank you to you for what you have done for us, for your love for us, um, for the way that you've given your life for us, that we might have life with you. God, give us new eyes this week. Help us to see your goodness in the midst of what we're doing. Help us to see uh, the blessings that you give us in the midst of the mixed blessings. And Lord, when we can't see, when we cannot find a way to say thank you, Lord, Help us to look just to you and to thank you for who you are, to trust that you are at work in, through, and among us. Lord, we love you very much. Amen.